Hi, I'm Jeremy Badner. I'm an instructional technology coach for Gull Lake Schools, and honestly, I have the best job ever. I just get to play with tech all day, help kids and teachers and other staff members use it. I mean, it's the dream job. So, and a lot of times, um, I explore and stumble on things that I really like, and today I'm going to talk about some of the really, really cool tools that I can use and you can use to give some positive feedback that'll make you look like a rock star, and the best part is it'll save you time, and it's significantly easier than any other way to give feedback. So we're going to explore how to give feedback to students and staff in an audio format and video format. And I'll kind of let you in on a little secret. Um, I'm probably the only instructional tech coach on the planet that has zero keyboarding skills. You can ask my wife. She laughs at me. My little pinkies stick up. None of my fingers work right on those keyboards. So audio and video feedback has been a lifesaver for me. So we're going to kind of explore some awesome tools. So Moat and Talk and Comment for audio feedback and Loom and Screencastify for video feedback. Great free tools that you can easily install onto your device right now that work with Chromebooks, PCs, any of those kind of mobile devices. Um, some of them even have apps for your phones. They're awesome. And everything we're going to do today is free, so keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and jump in. So feedback is something that everyone wants. Every one of those businesses, every website you go to constantly has the smash the like button, subscribe. They want to know that you're listening to them, that they're hearing you. That you I'm sorry, that <laughs> you are hearing them. They want feedback to know that they're doing something right. Your students are starving for it too. They need to know that they did something right. My own, my own children say that all the time. They're looking for positive feedback. And the handwritten notes that we used to do, the post-its I would stick on their desks, or the little comments you write in a project or a paper, those are great. They go a long way. But this day and age, kids are digital. They like things that are on their device. They can hear your voice. They can see you. It's really, really meaningful. So we're going to explore some tools that your kids can hear you, they can see you, and like I was saying, it makes your life even easier. So let's give some positive feedback in an easy way. We'll start with some audio tools. And I just picked two of my favorites. My all-time favorite is Moat. It's an incredibly powerful tool. Um, just It's an extension you install. And if your kiddos have it, it makes it easier to, but they don't need to. So if your tech department doesn't want the kids to have access to it, same thing with talk and comment. The teacher needs to have the extension. Once you've got it, you've got all the power for audio. So you're going to have the ability to go ahead and record your voice, to send it to your kids, and share your comments in a really easy, meaningful way. And the nice thing about audio feedback is... For example, let's say your kids did a paper and it's a couple paragraphs on a screen. With any of your text feedback, they would go to that comments box, they would have to read it, and then find where that was at within their story or their paper. The beauty of audio is they are listening to you. They don't need to look at what you're saying. They can hear what you're saying, find that section in their project, hear your feedback, your suggestions, your good, maybe things they need to work on, and they can just work on it while hearing you. So it's the perfect environment for this, and there's nothing more powerful than your voice. Words are great on paper, but when they hear it, it carries a lot more meaning. So the way that these tools are used, either one of them will have an icon on your computer, and when you click it, it'll open up your microphone, it'll record you, and it'll give you a couple of options. If you and your students have the extensions installed, little pop-up boxes happen. That makes things run much better. If your kiddos or your other staff members for some reason don't have the extension, what you'll end up getting is a web link that when you click it, a new tab opens and they'll hear your voice. So they both work. You don't have to worry about everyone having the extension. They'll both work. It's definitely much better baked in and works, works better if everyone involved has the extensions. So we're going to explore a couple. And the first one we're going to do, my favorite, Moat. You cannot go wrong with Moat. They have really stepped up their game. They've really dove in and gotten educators what they kind of need. There is a premium version if you want it. It gives you a lot more options like transcripts and longer recordings. But you can get away with the free version. You really can. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. Basically, 
everywhere Moat works, you will see a little, like a comment box or someplace that you can type in, and there'll be a purple icon, the Moat icon. If you click that, you're good to go. You can record a Moat. You can also use, if you look at the top of my screen, the Moat extension. So if you install the extension, you'll always have access to make a recording. And by clicking on that, it'll just bring up the Moat recorder. And when I click the little Moat icon, boom, I'm recording right now. So everything I'm saying, it's recording. I click the checkbox and it automatically copies to my clipboard. All I have to do is go someplace, paste that link in, you're golden. So, I mean, really, it's that easy. So if I wanted to give a comment on maybe a, a student's work, I can go over to this document here. Just like doing a written comment, you have to highlight something in their text. You go over to the comment button. It'll open up the box next door. And right there is that magic purple moat icon. If I click it, it'll start recording. That was an awesome writing. I really liked how you did that. You Here's where you'd give your feedback. I'm going to go ahead and hit the checkbox. I'm done. It takes a second. And what you're going to see is also a link. So I could, if I didn't have them have the extension, you're going to get a little link. I could also put that just about anywhere. I could just paste that link in right here. And there's a link. It's a web link that they could click on and it will open and play. But Mode is really cooler than that because if I click the comment, I'm done making it, it builds in a player right into that tool. There we go. So all I have to do is when my student comes in to read their comments, they click the play button. It'll start recording. That was an awesome writing. I really liked how you did that. You it is really that easy. It's awesome. So simply just clicking that little count, that moat icon, boom. Google Sheets are the same way. If I were to go up and click on a sheet, I could click on any one of my cells here, go to my comment box, I'm going to go ahead and delete these old ones out, click on add a comment, click on that little moat icon, record my comment right here, click the checkbox, click the comment button. And now what they have is an embedded comment. All they have to do is click the play button, record my and that's it. It's really, really that easy. Where it gets really cool with Moat is with Google Forms and, and Slides. So let's see what a form is like. So here's just a basic little form. And let's just say I'm giving a form to, to five-year-olds. They can't read. So putting text in it's really hard. I'm going to have to walk around to every one of those kids and read the text to them. Well, that's going to be very time consuming. And as a teacher, I'm going to be exhausted. But if I could use my voice, I can go into this Google form and read the text to them. So where it says, what candy is best? I can go into the description here. I can go up to my moat icon, the extension up here at the top, click on it, click the little recorder, what candy is best? All I did was read that. You can see my moat was recorded. Go into my description and paste, and it just put a link in. Let me show you what it looks like for the kids. If I go to the eyeball up here and go right to that moat recording, you will see those little boxes come right up. And so your five-year-olds can go in here, click the play button. What candy is best? I can go down to this one. Kit Kat. So these kiddos can't read, but they can hear. Snickers. So a little less feedback, but a great tool for that. So the same thing happens in Google Slides. This is where things get really cool too. Um, with a Google Slide, you can do just like the th same thing, the feedback that you want, but you can also make Moat do a little bit more work for you. Because you installed the extension, you now have this purple icon in all of your Google Slides. So if I were to click that icon, it's going to take away all the hard work that some of you guys and your, your teachers have been doing. So with remote and all of the things that we've had to do digitally with our students with Google Slides over the past couple of years, we've got a lot of teachers who use their phone or another device to record themselves saying something. They upload that audio clip into their Google Drive. Then they go into a Google Slide and they go over to the insert button and then they go to insert 
an audio clip, and it's multiple steps. If you have the mode extension because you're already giving this awesome feedback to your students, if you have it installed, if I click this right here in Google Slides, watch this. Your teachers are going to freak out. You ready? I click that icon. I'm just going to click the start button. So today's lesson is going to involve just read the words below. Okay, my great project. So we're going to click this little icon here. I'm going to click the, I can listen to it, make sure it's right. So today's lesson. I'm going to click the insert button. And the magic happens. Abracadabra, it says it right up here. It is now inserting that audio from Moat right into my slide. No recording on a third party, like a third device, transferring it to your drive. It is right here. So I'm going to drag this up here where I can see it better. I'm even going to make it a little bit bigger. When I hover on it and hit the play button. So today's lesson is going to involve... That's awesome! And you're like, well, purple's not really my color. You can recolor the mode icon. Maybe I really like this. Ooh, that's not a good color. There we go. This yellow color. Maybe that's going to match my theme a little better. Or... Maybe I have really cool icons or things like that that I already want. Like I want this to be a number one or something. If I right click on that, go to replace image, and go to search the web. If I just type in the number one, so maybe this is step one, and you can replace that image with anything. And all the kids have to do is hover on it, hit the play button, so and they've got it. Is going to involve so an added bonus for Moat. Not only is it awesome for giving back this feedback right on the side where they can hear your voice and see their text at the same time, you can also insert audio into your slides. And the other way for especially our middle school and high school teachers who give email feedback, one of the great things to do is to give them an email that they don't have to read, they can hear. So if you go to your inbox, you hit the compose button, once you have the Moat icon or um, extension installed, you'll have this little icon in the bottom of your inbox right here when I'm trying to send an email. If I go into my email and instead of typing all this feedback for my students, I want to tell them how their paper was or I want to give them some personal feedback one-on-one -on -one in an email, I click that Moat icon. I'm recording right now. So everything that I'm saying is being recorded. That was a great piece of work you turned in. I loved your project. It was so great. I can't wait to sh display it at our next staff meeting. You click the stop button. Just like the comments and slides and docs and anything else, um, sheets, it's going to embed the Moat player. And all your students have to do when they get this email is click the play button. I'm recording right now. So everything that I'm saying is being recorded. That was a great Is that not awesome? Your kids get to hear your voice. It's perfect. So Moat does all of this. Works in documents, works in slides, in forms, in sheets, in Google Classroom. You know those, those personal comments you can make to students. So they turn a paper in, instead of typing out those comments, boom, you add a Moat, they've got it. They hear your voice and with Gmail. Moat is awesome. Your other tool, and this one is not quite as powerful, but same thing, it's free. Talk and comment. And this one's really easy too because it will work in all the same programs. It does all the same things. It just gives you a web link. And same thing, if your students have the extension installed, that gives them the ability to hear it in a player. If they don't have the extension install, installed, just like Moat, they'll get a web link and it basically just opens a new tab. Either way, they will hear you and the power of your voice will get to your kids. So I'll show you how a talk and comment works too. If I go into a document and I'm gonna go ahead and resolve this Moat one and I'm gonna get rid of this link. So now I'm not using Moat, I wanna use talk and comment. I'm gonna highlight whatever it is I want to give a comment about. So this is just like using Moat. The only difference is after you have the extension installed, you can see it's not really living up here where I would normally have it. I don't have to click anything up here. The cool thing about talk and comment is it's on top of all the pages you already are on. So some of you might have noticed way over here to the right is this little microphone icon. That is for talk and comment. So if I just highlight something and I click on the 
comment. So I want to add a comment in here. I'm not going to click the purple mode icon. That just happens to be showing up because I have the extension installed. I'm going to go over to this talk and comment button and click it. I'm already recording. You can see I'm doing a little countdown here. Everything's great. I'm giving you feedback. This is an awesome paper. I cannot believe the research you did. Or, wow, I'd give you 12 smiley faces for this one. It's awesome. If I really hated the recording, I click the X, I start over. But I'm going to say this one's good. I'm going to hit the checkbox. A box is going to come up. I can hear what I said. I'm already recording. You see I'm doing a little countdown. So I'm going to, I think that's the world's best um, um, comment I could give. Right here is the web link. Now the only trick you have to really pay attention to is if you look here, it's all HTTPS and it's got a great link, but then it's got this voice note at the end. If you just copy all of this except where it says voice note and I say okay, I can go into this comment box and paste it. So that's the web link and when I hit comment, there's the link that if my students don't have text, talk, and comment installed, that's what they would see. They would click it. But since I have it installed, clicking this little play button, just like Moat, I'm already recording. You see, I'm doing a little countdown. Super quick, super easy. It works just like Moat does. I could do it in any one of these tools. Same thing with um, like what we saw with the, um, the form. This is what the talk and comment form would look like. So where Moat has this purple icon, everything in Moat is all purple, so I hit that play button, It was that was the Good Moat. Here. here is the talk and comment. Just a test, test, test. There you go. Just a <laughs> test, test, test. So talk and comment just gives this little blue box with a little arrow. So it's exactly the same thing. Works the same way. You could go into an email, copy that link, paste it in. It really does all Sorry, it does all of the same things as Moat, a little bit lighter, a little bit smaller, um, doesn't have all the power, but just as quick and easy. So those are the two ways you could give quick audio feedback. But now we're going to explore video feedback. Now audio is powerful, not denying it. Quick, easy, kids and, st and staff love to hear your voice. It's very powerful. The next step up is video. You know the saying, a picture's worth a thousand words? Videos are worth like a billion words. There is so much you can do with it. And we're going to talk about two 100% free, easy to use products that will give you a chance to give your students a video positive comment from you. So the power of video is awesome because not only do you get what audio already gave you, the sound of your voice. You are also getting the ability for your students to see you and you to have the power of sharing the screen if you wanted to. So the kids can see exactly what you're talking about and how awesome they did. You could point out exactly what you appreciate in their work. So the two tools we're gonna to talk about are Loom and Screencastify. Both have free versions. You can get away totally with the free version. Um, the only difference, like Loom is totally free for educators for everything you would ever need. Screencastify, you're limited to five minutes. So that's the only downside. But if you're giving more than five minutes, you could do two clips really quickly. And that's a lot of talking. Your kids don't want to listen to you that long, trust me. You're already struggling and we're only halfway done with this one. So um, we'll talk about these two products. They're super easy, super um, great for your kids. Same thing, they're both extensions that you would install into Chrome. They work with anything. Loom even has um, a mobile phone app, which is really nice, so you can give feedback on the fly. Walking down the hall, I found myself doing a loom to record things for someone. So, and like I was saying, the other benefit of the video is not only your kids seeing your face, like we're seeing right now, but you also have the power to share the screen so they can see exactly what you're talking about. So we're going to jump right in to loom. Um, oh, let's talk about the difference between the two first. Loom, both free, is super quick and super easy. I mean, you click the extension, you start recording. When you click end, you basically just get a web link and you ship it off. So you paste that web link anywhere you want. It's super clean, super easy. So if you're looking for just the in, out, and done, Loom is an easy way to go. 
Screencastify has a little more power. It has an, um, an editor, so you can kind of do some more things. You can box around things. You have some really cool customizing things. The advantage to that one is all of your videos are stored in your Google Drive. So it seems to take, I think when I do my recordings, Loom, are, Loom is faster, but those videos are short, uh, stored on their servers. So if your district has a problem with that, Loom might not be for you. You can download those and delete them off the servers. Mine are all just me anyhow, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so Loom gives you a web link to a video that's stored somewhere else. Screencastify puts your video into your Google Drive, so it's yours. It's not even theirs anymore. So that's kind of the difference between the two. So let's start with Loom. Super easy, super quick. I like this one. And I, I should say this too before we go any further. If you were to ask me which one's my favorite, I really don't have one. It all depends on what the project is. If I want super quick and easy, I use Loom. If I want a little bit more power and some editing, or maybe I really want to have that for later use really easily, I always use Screencastify then. So they're both super quick and super easy. So Loom, like I was saying, it's just click and go. Same thing as the audio ones. If I were to go to my document here, and just like we did the audio comments, I'm going to highlight part of it. I'm going to open up my comment. And right here, you can see I could give my audio feedback, but I'm going to go to the, I already installed the extension, the Loom extension. It's this little kind of purple-blue color. When I click it, just like all other editing to, or um, recording tools, it'll say, which microphone do you want to use? Which um, video do you want to use? Your first thing you're going to choose is, do I want to use my screen and my camera, just my screen or just my camera? I want to use them both. So I'm going to choose my IPVO microphone and Microsoft camera. There we go. And this is where it's cool. If I want to record my screen, I have that ability now. So I'm doing my screen and my camera. And you can see I'm down here and I can drag this anywhere I want. And what's nice about this is I'm going to show the kids what I really like. So I can record them both, hit to start recording. I'm going to record my screen, hit share, three, two, one. I really loved this project you did. I loved how your wording was. It's so phenomenal. This, the way you started, the word make is my favorite word to start a paragraph with. It was awesome. I love how you indented. I know they didn't do any of this, but I'm making them feel good because this is our positive attitude. And our best thing is I can drag me anywhere I want and I can look down and say, look, that is awesome right there. I love that. And your kids know what you're talking about. So I could drag this back over. Hit the stop sharing. It loads right here. I can see myself. Everything looks good. I do have the ability to trim if I want, so I could make it a little bit shorter. But if I think it's awesome, all I have to do is click the share button right here. How do you want to share it? I can email it. All I have to do is copy the link, go back to my document, Remember I had this word voice highlighted and I put my little comment over here and paste it in. Just like the other tools with audio, I click the comment button and it will embed it right in there. So all your kids have to do is click that and it will play that video. So they get to this screen, they hit the play button. I really loved this project you did. I loved how your wording was. It's so phenomenal. The way you started, they didn't do it. There. I love that. And there you go. They can close that out. Life is wonderful. So all you get is a web link. Super easy, super fast. Generally, if you don't need to show the screen, maybe you just need to, they just need to see you. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and resolve that one. I'm going to highlight that voice and say, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and click that loom icon again. This time, I just want them to see a video of me. So I'm going to change this from screen to camera only. I'm going to start recording. And you'll see 
that I will be this little circle in the bottom. It doesn't matter where I put this, but right now I'm recording. There we go. That was such an awesome project. I am so proud of you. You are incredible. Keep it up. All I have to do is hit the stop button, go up to my little icon up here. It's already copied to the clipboard, but I hit the play button. That was such an awesome project. I am so proud of you. Now what you'll notice is it's no longer that little round circle. It was recording in full frame the whole time. So it's just a webcam. That's all I did is recorded my webcam. I've already copied that link. I can go back to that comment, hit the paste button, put it in there, and when that kiddo clicks that button to play it, They are right back here. They hit the play button. That was such an awesome project. I am so proud of you. They've got their comment. Same thing you can do it in sheets, slides, anything. Um, it's really, really easy to give your voice and face and the power of sharing that screen with your kids. That makes it so easy. So Loom is, like I was saying, quick, easy, done. The one really cool benefit of Loom is that, well, two things, I should say. Two really cool things about Loom. In my library in Loom, because remember, it's different. Loom does not store all of your videos in your Google Drive. It kind of keeps them. You can organize things in a folder. So I've made a positive folder. So this is where I do my positive comments to teachers. So here's all my quick little clips. It's super quick, super easy. I click the Loom link and you can see these are all just me talking to teachers. So I'm just using basically the webcam, recording myself, sending an email off to teachers. The really cool thing about the way it works is if I'm emailing it to people, remember I just recorded that last positive video. If I go to my email now, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the sample that we were doing in Moat. So we're going to delete that moat one out. This time, I wanted to share a video. Now what's really cool is when I go to hit and compose, Loom has an icon in my Gmail. It will take the last recording you made. So when I click this, it gives me a choice. Do I want to make a new one? Or do I just want to insert the last one. Watch this. I click that button. Boom. It's already in there. I don't even have to record it separately. If I did a recording in a comment and I want to email it to them, it's already there. Or maybe I would just, what I, how I do it is I hit the Loom icon, record my video, I go to email, just click that button, it automatically imports. And then they get this video right there. They can just click it and it plays in their email, right inside the email. They don't even get, have to use the link and get out. It is so awesome. As you can see right here, it's already playing. All I have to do is hit the play button and you would hear it. So it's super quick, super easy. Loom is just quick and easy. That's that's one thing. And like I said, you could organize in folders and put it right into your email. The other tool is Screencastify. And this one has just more options. So Loom's a great place to start if you just want to start getting video feedback and you just want to explore what's it like to record myself giving some positive feedback and put it out to kids. Loom is really easy to do that. When you start to want to explore a little bit more and do cooler things, Screencastify is the way to go. So Screencastify will give you a little bit more power and some more tools than Loom does. Loom was quick, easy, record, send it out, you're done. Screencastify will allow you to add some markings on your screen, to trim things, to do a little bit of more editing. So it's a little bit more powerful. It also allows you to save all of your video files into your Google Drive. So if that's important to you, Screencastify is the way to go. Once again, like I said earlier, if you were to ask me which one's my favorite, I use them both just as much. So it all depends on kind of the use case that you have. So Screencastify works just like Loom does. I'm gonna go ahead and open up this student work. I'm gonna go instead of the Loom icon, I'm gonna go up to my Screencastify extension. I will click on it. Just like Loom, it's gonna say, do you wanna record just your browser? So I'm gonna do a screencast. 
your whole desktop, or just the webcam. So if you just want to show yourself talking to them, just like the, we did with the Loom, you would choose the webcam. In this case, I'm going to show you the webcam and the screencast part of it because I want you to see the cool editing tools. So I'm going to close Browser tab, and right here, I'm going to embed my webcam. Just like Loom had that cool little circle, Screencastify is going to have a rectangle video of me. I'm going to click the record button. Screencastify will load. You're going to see a countdown and my video come up. So here's my video. Just like Loom, I can drag this wherever I want. This is awesome. I love your writing. So you're giving this feedback. But here's where Screencastify has a little bit more power. I can click this pen down here in the bottom corner and it will give me some pen color choices. So maybe I'll do the blue. And I can now annotate right on top of the kid's writing. I can also, this is what's really cool, when I scroll, it will tie that right back up. So it it's a little bit laggy right now. I've got multiple cameras going and I'm recording all this. But that little box that I drew, or maybe I want to change my color and say, you know, I love that choice of word, but maybe we could choose another one. When I scroll, it will tie that right back to where it was at. One button clears it right down here. I hit the clear button, boom, it's gone. And the back button gives me my other choices and we know how kids love stickers. It doesn't matter how old you are, adults love stickers. I could say, wow, that is an absolute awesome project you did there. And I can put stickers all over my video if I want. So, um, that's a great option for some kids. Same thing, I can go back. I also have the option to box things to really highlight something I'm talking about. Like maybe I was like, you know, you really want to look at that section right there. Make another word choice for that. So this is the little power that Screencastify has kind of over Loom. And one button will clear it all. I click that clear all button. Boom, everything's gone. I go down to hit the stop button. I've finished my recording. Now, while it's loading here in the background, some things you have to consider about Screencastify, it's free to use. Everything you saw that I'm doing right there, you will have a, um, for free. It doesn't cost anything. You do have a five minute limit. So you can only go up to a five minute video, which is more than you should ever need. So we're gonna let the Screencastify here load on this next tab. So as soon as I'm done recording, it's gonna open up this tab. So right over here, it opened a new tab. And then here's my video, so you can preview it. And you can watch it, you can say, oh, that's perfect. If you were done, you could just click this copy and share link and send it off. It's that easy. This video is also already stored in your Screencastify. It's a folder that gets created in your Google Drive. Now my tip to you, small tip here on the side, is take that folder in your drive, right click on it, click the share button, and make it anyone with the link can view. Then you don't ever have to worry about sharing rights for kids to see the videos that are shared with them. But anyhow, if I click the click share link, I can put that in anything. So I can just click that right now, go back to my document that I was working on, highlight some part of that where I wanna make the comment, click my comment, and paste. When I hit the comment button, it's going to embed that link into the comment. So all a student would have to do is click that button, it'll open a new tab, and they will be able to see that screencast that I made with the writing, with the drawings, with my video camera on there, and they will see what it is I gave them feedback on. They click the play button. Just like Loom, I can drag this wherever I want. This is awesome. I love your writing. <laughs> so really, really easy. The thing that Screencastify can do, though, is maybe I had I wanted to take the beginning off or the end, or I want to do a little bit of editing in it. This button right here, Open in Editor, if I click that, it'll load up a new tab into the Video Editor. Free, once again, remember, that's the benefit for us teachers. We look for everything that's free.
And just like a very simple, basic video editing tool, you can do things like you can cut things out, you can crop, you can zoom in, you can blur out things that you don't want other people to see. You can add text or you can delete sections. You can also add any other media you had. Maybe you had two little clips that you did one and you're like, oh, I forgot to say something, you did a second video. You can splice those two together. So it, it doesn't do everything that iMovie, Camtasia, or other really heavy editing programs do, but it's all you need for positive comment. So if you wanted to put in some, some text and put a box up that says something like, congratulations, great job, that's all you have to do. You would just type something in there and that box shows up wherever it is you wanted it. So you would have said like, good job. Oops. <laughs> great job. Put that over here on the side. And now that text box is part of this. So as it plays, I can now annotate it pops up here on over on the side. So it just has some more powers. And then you just hit the export button and you're right back. I want to go back to Screencastify. Name it Demo1. I'm right back to the screen and when that comes up there's that great job so I've been able to edit some things and then the same thing I can click this email button right here send it to email it's gonna open up my Gmail and make it so all I have to do is type in anything else I want and it's already shared so here's my link when I hit the send button, that's a hyperlink. It opens up for them, they're ready. Same thing if I was gonna go back into this, I can go back and add that new edited one in. And you'll see it's the exact same link because it's stored in Drive. All it did was edit and change that a little bit. So when I hit the reply button, boom, there's my new link. Same link, but I mean, it does all the editing. So it's really, really cool. Screencastify has a lot more of that video power so you can edit things you can add titles text boxes you can trim things um, loom only allows you to kind of trim the front and back a little bit so those are the two great tools to use um, your added bonus kind of like we said loom you can organize things in folders and you can do that gmail kind of pop-up link screencastify allows you to make gifs so maybe i want to make this entire little video or make my own GIF, all I have to do is go over to this export video down here and go to export as a GIF. And if you don't know how GIFs work, it's just an animated image. So you could have a GIF of just totally like, great job, you did awesome, giving a thumbs up and give that out to kids. So it's kind of like making stamps. So I'm gonna show you how easy this is. This is awesome. So I can just go up to the Screencastify extension up here. This time I'm just gonna do my camera. That's it, just my camera. I'm gonna record. It's going to give me my little countdown. That is awesome. I'm going to hit the stop button. Now I made a dorky little video of just me. It's going to open up in a new tab. Okay. I don't even care about the audio because remember GIFs are just animated images. I think that's an awesome, I'm going to take this little, trim this off just a little bit. Let's see how that looks. And I'm going to trim the beginning off just a touch. Let's play it. That's awesome. Thumbs up, cheesy smile, right to there. So I only want to go. to there. I'm going to save that as a trim. I'm going to name this awesome. Okay. Now this time I'm not going to share the video. I'm going to go to the, to the bottom where it says export. Export is a GIF. You can change your resolution size. The bigger the size, the bigger the file, and you might run into problems with that. So I'm just going to leave it right where it says. I'm going to hit export.
right down here it says download. I'm going to click the download button. I'm going to go back to my student work here. And this time, I'm just going to drag my GIF right into the screen. This is a document. You can't put videos in document, but I just used a video tool to give them a thumbs up. It doesn't even have my voice. And that kid's going to go, oh, he thinks I'm awesome. So Screencastify will allow you to make GIFs as well, which everybody loves a GIF. So quick, easy. You can make a bunch of these and save them. Make yourself doing all kinds of words. You could also use that editing tool and put the word awesome in text across the screen if you wanted so they know exactly what you're saying. So that's another tip on Screencastify. I'm going to show you how to use So those are some great tools. Everything is available on this slide deck. So this link, bit.ly, student feedback tools. Make sure the S is capitalized, the F is capitalized, and the T. If you type that in, you'll have access to all of the how-tos I put there. I have some videos in there. I have all kinds of um, links to things that I've made to help with any of that. Um, start giving your voice and your video to kids. They love it. They need it. They're craving hearing you say how awesome they are. So be awesome and tell them how awesome they are. Thanks.